to talk about Edward Snowden, who um, did an interview with uh, Vice. Uh, not a huge fan of Vice, by the way. I'm not a big Vice guy. Uh, you know, they've 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 kind of turned into the broy wing of the um, uh, American war propaganda. <laughs> like that's kind of what they are. They have like a bunch of corporate corporate warmongering shit. Um, that they that they throw up there. I'm not a huge fan of them, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt. But they do, but they are the ones that kind of like the you know they have interviews with fucking um, Edward Snowden. They have interviews with alternative journalists. They bring in these different perspectives. Um, sometimes they skew them. Sometimes they give them an honest shake. With this interview, I do feel like uh, they gave Edward Snowden an honest shake. They gave him an opportunity to really. Um, uh, talk about uh, talk about something that I don't think you will hear in corporate media. And I've listened to a bunch of stuff from Edward Snowden. I like Edward Snowden. I, I don't know how you feel about him or, uh, or what your personal opinions on, on Snowden are. I, I think he did the right thing. Um, I think that should have probably um, pushed for a real transformation um, in, in um, how the intelligence community surveils the public. And uh, whether what they're doing is the right thing or not. But what ended up happening is the public was still pacified by it. We got into this debate of, uh, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you shouldn't have any worried about being spying, you know, being spied on, even though it goes against uh, the Fourth Amendment. Um, it, it takes away privacy, it creates mental health issues uh, when when you don't have a moment to to yourself to to be private. Um, you know, we've we've kind of paid into the panopticon at this point. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the term panopticon, I like that term a lot. Uh, I <laughs> uh, the first time I heard it was was Glenn Greenwald who talked about it. Uh, he talks about this panopticon idea a whole lot, which is basically, um, I believe it comes from fiction maybe Jeremy Bentham talked about it, but basically it's this huge tower in a prison community and you never know um, who's in that tower. And this obelisk can basically view every segment of the, the prison community. And you never know who's in there uh, because you can't see in, but it can always look out. Um, right. So in, in our case with, with the, the intelligence community, we can never peek into that camera. Right, this camera right here that we're looking into, we can't see who's on the other side of it, uh, but you can look right into me. You know, so um, a couple couple different ways to kind of look at that is um, one is to say, well, fuck it. You know, they're 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 spying on us anyway. You know, they're keeping tabs on us anyway, right? Like Facebook won't allow you to post certain content, or it will suppress certain content. Uh, Twitter does the same thing. YouTube. Does, so fuck it. Why not just say what you want to say and find a way to get the message out? Uh, because you know they're watching anyway, right? So why curtail your behavior regardless? Uh, and other people are like, no, we should curtail our behavior because that's the right thing to do. We shouldn't have this kind of unwavering freedom to be ourselves. We shouldn't be, we, we should kind of be restrained. And, and this is a good thing. Besides, if you're not doing anything wrong, what's the harm? Right. What's the harm? So here's the harm. This is uh, this is what uh, Edward Snowden is talking about. He's he's warning us that we're we're on the precipice um, of uh, of authoritarianism uh, that might be coming in the wave of the future. So um, one of the ways that we're dealing with this pandemic right now is a method called contact tracing. And I was mildly familiar with this before, like when everybody was kind of talking about it. I was mildly familiar with this idea of contact tracing. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I recused myself from talking about it because I didn't fully understand what exactly it was. I knew Korea did it. Um, I knew Taiwan and uh, China did it. I think they're, they're talking about using it in the UK. I think they're talking about using it in uh, a, a majority of European countries. And I think they're, they're, they're attempting to talk about it in the States as well. And I'll get to that in just a moment here. Um, contact tracing is basically the idea that you use telecom services and cell phones um, to find out who you had contact with in, in, um, in terms of COVID, right? So let's say you go in, 
you get a test, you test positive, then they basically use your cell phone data and a bunch of telecom data uh, to find out that you had contact with uh, this person, this person, this person, this person. They get all of their phone number information and they basically send out a test to be like, hey, you've come into contact with somebody that is tested positive. Um, you should go and get tested and probably quarantine yourself. This is what they did um, in uh, uh, Korea and, and uh, in South Korea, in Taiwan and China and stuff like that. Um, and they're and they're also giving it a, a, a try in in uh, a bunch of European countries as well. Now, positives and negatives, right? Like, how are we going to contain this thing? How are we going to how are we going to know who has this thing? Especially when uh, it's asymptomatic. People don't show symptoms, but they still have the virus. That's pretty, um, pretty scary to people, right? And it, and and it is, you know, there's some there's some nervousness that can come out of it, uh, but it gives uh, governments and intelligence agencies access to your location. It gives them access to contacts. It gives them access directly into your phone, so they can just send you shit, you know. And and it gives them access to trace where you're going, um, and and it traces the phone itself. Uh, so the the uh, the equivalency that um, that they make in this Vice interview is um, that the the cell phone itself kind of becomes um, like an ankle bracelet. So the way they kind of operate it in these other countries is um, you have a you have a, a a a radius that you can travel from outside your house, right? So you can only go you know, um, 200 meters away from your residence. Um, and if you go beyond that, then the cops are going to show up and haul you away or whatever, whatever the rule is in whatever country, um, you know, this thing is being applied in. And uh, um, the notion of trust comes into, comes into play here is because, yes, you want, um, you want people to... Um, be safe. You want us to figure out who has this thing, who needs to be quarantined, who needs any kind of medication, who needs help, who needs to be taken care of in the system, right? Um, and that information is important. Um, but the trust comes into what are you going to do with all this information when we're when we're done with this? You know, is it going to be locked away in some sort of um, emergency reserve? in saying, you know, when, when the next wave of this pandemic or the new, or, or the next pandemic hits, we'll have a plan now. We'll have a way to use this contact tracing to uh, find who has it, who doesn't, and we'll be, we'll be able to take care of this thing faster. But that's never the case, right? Um, a la Patriot Act. Um, Patriot Act was supposed to be, um, basically we gave up a bunch of our freedoms because we were all scared of terrorism. Um, and, uh, and, you know, created this cycle of xenophobia and the cycle of racism and the cycle of, uh, of just hating each other all the time. Um, but the Patriot Act never went away. We just started engaging in more wars and saying more and more terrorism, that there's new forms of threats. Um, and the Patriot Act just transformed into being something different all the time. Right. It just it just evolved into 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 various different practices of giving up your rights and authoritarianism it just it just evolved into something different it's like the only form of evolution that the government actually believes in is evolving authoritarian principles so you know can we sit there and say um, that the government well, you only use this for emergency purposes when there isn't any sort of um, any sort of previous pattern or example to prove that that's actually what's going to happen. We'd never see them do that. Anytime they're like, this is for your safety, this is for your health and safety, so we're going to ask you to give um, amendments one, two, four, eight, uh, and let's just go ahead and say uh, t uh, 12. We're just going to ask you to give up those amendments, and then you'll be safe. And we'll give those amendments back to you. But then they just go, well, we're going to give you 12 back. But the other ones we kind of got to keep because, you know, things are still kind of scary. There's still fear out there. So they keep using this thing, and people sit there and keep going, okay, yeah, it's probably what we need to do here. 
you know, these authoritarian toolkits have been passed down from, from president to president, leadership to leadership, right? It went from Bush to Obama and Obama expanded drone warfare and created more wars out of, out of what Bush set up under the Patriot Act, being able to do that sort of stuff. And then he expanded this, the surveillance program with what happened with NSA, with what Edward Snowden revealed, right? And all of that got handed over to Donald Trump. And now Donald Trump is doing, um, what 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 he wants to do with it uh and who who else is it going to go to you know it, even if we get the next four years of trump it's just trump has it, control of it and then he'll hand it over to to who to the next biden to the next neoliberal that's put into put in charge that's just going to hand that shit over right to the to the intelligence communities like the cia or the nsa and now we're setting up a new infrastructure where we're giving up our, our Fourth Amendment rights, where we're, where we're giving up this, this, this contact tracing thing, where we give up our, our, our you know, telecommunications rights, where they can watch where we're going. They don't trust us, so why should we trust them? It's not a mutual thing. Um, in the States right now, uh, Apple and Google said that they would have apps uh, but it's on an opt-in basis. It's on an opt-in basis. Uh, who the fuck is going to opt into that? <laughs> I'm sure there's some of you out there, right? I'm sure there's a couple of you that are like, well, we got to do something. We got to opt into it so that there's this data, you know, all this, that there's all these problems with these numbers coming out of China, these numbers coming out of Europe and, uh, and, and even America itself. These are, you know, uh, only information about people that have uh, have actually shown symptoms, but this is asymptomatic. We need to know. We need to know who's got it. We need to know who's got the antibodies. We need to. So I get it. Where's the guarantee that this won't be used again? And uh, you know, unless we're in another pandemic, where where is the assurance of that? We've never seen um, any sort of government give us an assurance for that right and and this this is going to create more divide so you have this opt-in issue right so there's going to be a bunch of us that are going to go no fucking way get the fuck out of here are you crazy there's no way i'm going to do that there's no way i'm giving up my freedoms you know you're going to have a bunch of libertarians that are going to sit there and be like no it's my personal choice my personal freedom go fuck yourself you know even me i i, I don't really particularly want to do that i i you know i have to use google maps um, that gives away my location and I'm mildly uncomfortable leaving that location sensor on, um, you know, so I would be hesitant on opting into this. So it's going to create more divide because then you have a bunch of other people that are like, no, you should 100% opt in because it's about the health and safety of the community at large. And, and then now people will start arguing with each other and, and this creates more divide within, within the average working class people, right? Um, that's, that's what, that's what it's meant to do. Look at this mask situation that we're seeing, um, you know, where everybody's got to wear masks when they go outside and, and they're like, we recommend, we recommend it. We're not making it happen. We're just going to recommend it. We're just going to say that we highly suggest that if you step outside, you should wear a mask. And even like my mom, uh, in the building that, that, that you know, we're, we're I'm, I'm staying in with them. There's a lot of older folks that live in this building. Um, and, um, you know, just to go get the mail, my mom was yelled at yesterday by this old, old bitty, you know, that because my mom wasn't wearing a mask. And um, now there's reports coming out saying you should be wearing a mask inside your own home, that you should be staying six feet away from your parents. So like, I gotta stay the fuck away from my parents. <laughs> That's the general. Um, but you know, how far is this going to go? And that's just masks. That's just masks. We're taking it out on each other over masks over people, you know, not covering their noses and stuff in public because some people are like, well, this seems kind of ridiculous. Besides the mask should be going to healthcare workers. It should be going to uh, grocery store um, employees and, and these gig economy people, they should be receiving as much masks as we, as they need um, because they're the frontline workers. And even, and then that becomes a different debate. And all we do is argue and fight amongst each other. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, What's Apple losing? What's Google losing? What's the NSA or the CIA losing? Not a whole lot. They still just end up making up more money to 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 save these people while we're arguing amongst each other and keeping ourselves uh, in economic poverty. 
so we need to be, you know, watching for all this stuff because this is, uh, this is a dangerous precipice that we're in. And if we don't ask for accountability, if we don't keep these intelligence communities in check, if we don't keep these government organizations in check, we're going to slip slide right into authoritarianism. Because right now what we are is that we are the frog in the pot, right? We're, we're kind of in, in a pot. We're, we're that frog and we're swimming in the water and we feel real good about it. Um, but, but the authoritarians... Uh, have turned up the heat just a little by little. They'll turn up the heat, you know, and the water starts to get a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter. We don't really feel that heat until it's a little bit too late and we're cooking in it. And we're cooking in it. We just thought we were having a nice swim and now we're roasting alive. That's what we're being right now. We're the frog in that pot. What we should do is go, wait a minute, things are getting a little bit warmer here. Things are getting... I don't remember the water being as warm as it was. What the fuck's going on? Uh-oh, it's it's still getting warmer. I got to get out of this pot. So we got to keep an eye on that sort of stuff. We got to ask these questions. In a situation like this, you know, um, I think it's I think we can say that it's opportunistic. Um, I'm sure there are others that will say this is exactly what this pandemic was set up to do. Uh, there are reports that Bill and Melinda Gates and a bunch of other rich people were talking specifically about a pandemic like this in 2017, 2018, uh, something along those lines. Um, and perhaps that's what it was. Perhaps it was set up specifically to, uh, you know, create the pandemic, create a fear cycle and set up another event where we would give up a majority of our freedoms using the technology that everybody has, right? Which is our cell phones, which is the smartphone that we have that we carry around all over the place constantly over and over again. Um, so maybe that's, that's what's going on. Maybe that was the whole plan to begin with that. If, if this, this pandemic was created uh, in a lab or whatever it was, if that, if that ends up being proven to be absolutely 100% true, and this was all created, this was the whole thing was manufactured so that we would give them consent to take away our freedoms, so that they could constantly track us, so that they couldn't build, so 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 that no resistance can actually be built, so that you know we we slowly give up our um, our freedoms willingly out of fear, and fear is a very powerful emotion, and it's exploited. It's taken over pretty consistently. So my, my, you know, my thought in all this is regardless of which aspect of this is true, whether it's opportunism, whether this is manufacturing consent to take our freedoms away and walk us into authoritarianism willingly, um, think critically, ask your questions, question the motives of these people, question the motives of these corporations. Why do they want us to do this? Are they, and where is the guarantee that at the end of all this, uh, that when this pandemic is over, that they are not storing our data and using it for their own purposes, for their own needs, willy nilly, whenever they want, where's the guarantee of that? That is the, um, that is what I think we should be, we should be paying attention to. That's why critical thinking is so important. That's why skepticism is so important. Asking the right questions. That's why we should be. Um, we should be a society that thinks more than just willingly turns the keys over just because somebody belongs to a particular party or a particular organization. Um, we should be encouraged to have these conversations in our society and not be chastised for wanting to have these conversations. So for, for wanting to question certain things, for wanting to say, I wonder what the logic and reason behind all this stuff is. Um, so, so I hope that uh, uh, that you will you will do that going forward. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this 
every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that, uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me, and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.